Hey guys, we're now advancing towards Komarovsky Food Market, a place in the city center of Minsk, which is a great location to live by, by the way, if you're fond of fresh vegetables, chit chat with the vendors and stuff. So my trusted suppliers here will display, will exhibit the price range for the ongoing season. It's early April, let's see how much they charge for Ecuador bananas, so traditional and so popular in Belarus potatoes, carrots, and all the stuff we find here. Very soon you'll see a good batch, a good bunch of plastic flowers, unfortunate tradition. We have oncoming commemoration days for the ancestors, so the army of the old ladies will be placing these goddamn flowers on top of their diseased relatives. And this, that's supposed to symbolize memory, respect and all, but in fact it symbolizes a pretty bad environmental crime. Not much of an environmentalist myself, but I pick up an occasional bottle or two where they lie, where they lay without belonging to the place. And unfortunately, instead of recycling these flowers, and I'm told by the eco guys that they're not fit for recycling, they're just being dumped, burnt on the spot, and the product of that burning is not the best for environment. It's always a big deal about where the merchandise is coming from. I'm not sure how they declare, but sometimes the uh, Azerbaijani tomatoes may be not from Azerbaijan and uh, let's say strawberries from the south of Belarus may be from elsewhere, but that's not the main point. The main point is to have somebody you can trust. And let's start with the nuts. The market offers literally almost everything. Meat, all kinds of meats, chicken, ram, beef. Sorry if I confuse kitchen turns, never been good at that. All sorts of vegetables, all sorts of things. Peruvian blueberries, oranges, tangerines, grapes, whatever. They have everything. Half is sanctioned, half is not. After the fruit dealer, we're entering a dangerous sector where people are very allergic to media attention of any kind, unless you're buying a ton of stuff. Let's say hello to my tomato vendors. Just a quick reminder to all photography lovers, the public places in Belarus are open for any kinds of photography as long as the people who are in the shot are not clearly against being in the shot. So that's the only thing you have to keep in mind. And of course the nervous old ladies. <laughs> The indoor part of the market includes all kinds of delicacies, chicken eggs, dairy stalls, cottage cheese and stuff, and all sorts of 
oriental things, raisins, nuts, etc., etc., almost everything. Let's have a quick word with the dairy friends. Folks out here are yeah. probably not producers themselves, more like vendors, but they have their own thing in the background somewhere, producing and selling eggs, cheese, and uh, butter, and other cow-related things. So let's see what's on offer. And there's a, an unusually long line just by one of them, my regular vendor, by the way. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, meat suppliers uh, on top of the sausage stand I just visited. I mean, like meat, 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 which is very close to the farm where, where it's eating grass and enjoying sunshine and stuff like that. But upon some research, it's not a problem to find these guys and their rates. And if it's a, like a farmer, farmer, organic and stuff, it's going to be quite expensive, of course. But it's not a part of the market that I have researched by far. Let's say a quick hello to the fish guys and move on. Belarus doesn't have sea access and actually even the countries who have sea access have it processed and frozen somewhere in China and then sent back. So let's see what the fish stalls are offering. It's always a good idea to bring a Frenchman to check out the cheeses that have French names but probably have no relations to the regions in France. And uh, other experts to just get the stuff that you get if you don't know the vendor. Because occasionally my vendors do not provide me with 100% perfect merchandise. But in that case I can always come back and say in a couple of days, like that tomato was a bit strange and uh, complain and the replacement will be provided. Most of the food vendors here perfectly know who the foreigners are and they can be flexible and smiling and accommodating but still this does not eliminate the need to check the quality of what you're getting. And of course free samples are uh, part of the tradition. A bit of haggling may be appropriate as well. So communicate. You never ask, you never get. Eventually you're out with uh, loaded bags and Back at home, refrigerator routine, fresh salads, cool stuff for breakfast, teas and coffees. Kamarovsky Food Market offers a few more sections on top of the fruit section and the food section we've just visited. In winter time, of course, it shrinks, but right now it's expanding, welcoming the warm days and the weekends, mostly weekends are busier on week days you may find that one third of the place is empty but that's that's called crisis i guess